understood. You, you said the, the three principal community, uh, you're, you're waiting for the rigor, this word rigor. Uh, I'd like you to explain to me and to, to the others what that means. Are you talking about the purity of the principles? Well, I think I think Sydney um, brought something new to um, to our to our world, um, and and it was very definite. Like if you listen to him, or when I first met him, I I thought he's really uh, he's standing on solid ground somehow. You know, I didn't really know what ground. It was, but it was, and he was very, de very definite, very, um, very self-assured, very confident, very, uh, and, and he, and, and, and he, he had a, I mean, in a way, uh, I could say it now, he had a kind of a line and, uh, and, uh, he, it, it, and it wasn't to be crossed, you know, like he, 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 um, he, he had a, uh, certainty, and uh, that certainty intrigued me. Well, a lo lot of things intrigued me about what he had to say, but um, when I when I will use the word rigor, I mean I, that's what I'm referring to. Is that he wasn't? Um, there were a lot of things that he didn't have to. Um, deal with or think about he had to deal with people uh, but but he but but there was that certain certainty so I um, and I think that's uh, for me that's an important way it helped me to distinguish what Sid was talking the principles from uh, everything else like like there was a and he and he knew those principles and he knew he knew what everything else was because he had been living in everything else. And then when he found the principles that just cleared out, um, this is my way of saying it, he cleared out all the, all the error, all the debris, all the, all the garbage, all, all the things about the past, all the things about things that I had learned about in my field he he just uh, he, he just dismissed it, you know. And um, but I could tell in his dismissing, it wasn't like he was um, uh, uh, angry about it. it. It was like it was just clear to him that there were a lot of things that people in psychology and, and elsewhere were thinking about and involved in and dealing with and wrestling with and lost in that that he was not lost in at all and uh that's what i mean by rigor so you know the principles provide rigor the principles provide uh, a certainty that was not evident uh, you, you could say they also provide the wisdom of the ages, or, or they provide um, a difference between um, truth and uh, error. Uh, they they provide a difference between the int the the uh, the spiritual and the intellect and the intellectual. Um, they, they provide a difference between uh, the logic, uh, the logical, and the illogical. Uh, they provide a difference between um, form, uh, the form uh, of the mind, the, the details, the concepts, the beliefs, and the formless, the formless but 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 true. And so, I started to see that line. There's a line there between those. Uh, things and, th and that really helped me to because then I wanted you know when I when I met uh, Harry and uh, and all these people that uh, I, I was very fortunate because I I was one of the very first uh, psychologists to to meet uh, 
these people, and I, I didn't know, but I learned later from listening to Sid, because he, he told, he would insinuate that, that um, it was 10 months before anyone really heard what he was, what he found. And then, um, and then uh, someone heard what, what he found, and then there were two. And, um, and then someone came up to that person and said, whatever's happened to you, something's happened to you, I want it. And then there were three. And um, by the time I got there, there were lots of people, but they were kind of like, um, they were kind of like uh, pioneers or uh, discoverers. They, 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 they found what Sid, uh, a piece, even a tiny piece of it was really powerful for them and very helpful for them. And they, uh, and they were like prototypes, you know, like whenever um, an, an inventor discovers something, let's say like, a, I was reading this morning someone about electric motors and someone, you know, in, in, in 1828, this person, uh, made the first little electric motor <laughs> and um uh who knew it was just a little tiny thing and i don't even know how to explain what it looks like but uh that was the beginning of, of of the electric motor and then some person put that on a bicycle and that was in 1850 you know and then and now we have electric cars zooming all over the place well that was all part of a process with these people uh, that were on Salt Spring Island. They were like, uh, they, uh, and Sid described this once. He said, we, uh, people came in and they wanted to argue. And we argued, but we weren't arguing. We, we were just uh, getting the proof. And the proof, uh, by the time I got there, uh, was out and um people these people they were different they uh, they they just had a a different w way of um being and um and so i fortunately stuck with them and stuck with sid and i i wanted to I, i'd always been interested in, in community mental health and and I could see that they had picked up something from Sid that was, that made them different. And that's what they would say. And so um, they were kind of like a, like prototypes, you know, they were sort of like experimental human beings. I, I don't mean it, I don't mean to, to, to demean that at all, but I mean, they were, they, they had something to offer and now after these many years, it's been, I don't know, four, over 40 years or it's been a long more, time. It's been more. Yeah. Because I, I met, so Sid had that experience in 73, and I met him in 77. And I in 76. So, 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 you know, that, uh, we all kind of got it, um, uh, um, Impacted, infected. <laughs> we, we got something, something changed for us, and and it, uh, and for all of us, and it's still it's still happening, of course, but it's it's still on a very small scale. But uh, it's still it it just keeps growing, um, and this group is a part of that that grows too. You, you all, you folks are. Are part of that, and um, so it just it just keeps expanding. But um, at some point, you know, hopefully there'll be like a critical mass of of people, wherein it'll flip the whole um, the, the rigor again, the rigor, the certainty, the uh, the the and and what that does for people 
it looks to me like is it it eliminates uh, like a million things that you don't have to think about you you you, you realize that you don't have to think about that to even though you maybe used to think about it a lot you don't have to you don't have to so when you start thinking about it the past or the or the uh, you know like you're you're saying nikki the the chaos <laughs> <laughs> you know, or the pain or the, or the problems, you, you realize, oh, you, you drop it. And it's that elimination of the dropping of thought, uh, of, of unnecessary, painful, negative, egotistical thought that is, uh, change, it changes us. It changes people, and it changed in 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 Sydney. It would change the world. I, one of the cutest stories about him, I think, one of them is that he he thought, well, uh, I'll, oh my goodness, uh, this is the answer uh, that I've been looking for my whole life, and um, whether I knew it or not. And then, by gosh, he saw that. That's what every, that's the answer everybody was looking for. And so he thought, well, I'll tell somebody, I, I've got to get this off island. And so uh, he went to the pastors on the island. He thought, well, the pastors have a bishop, and the bishop has an archbishop, and the, all, all, all those people are off island. And I'll tell them, and then they'll tell their people off island, and then they'll tell their people. And... Um, six weeks there'll be peace on earth <laughs> is that that's, that was this isn't that the sweetest thought yeah. six, six weeks because they thought everybody was like i can't believe it listen to this you know and then they would say and they would just spread like wildfire but uh, of course it didn't <laughs> well it has spread like wildfire in that you, you guys are with are with it we're all together in this and it's not a groupy thing or anything like that it's just a, a truth and so but it's it you know it, it it's taken a while but that rigor has helped me talk to my fellows uh you know folks that i meet because we we all meet other people and if you get the chance, you want to try and say something, and they're going to hear it based on their old psychology, really. And um, and you're going to say, well, no, that's not really what I'm talking about. So you, you have to form a conversation or a dialogue or something, because you're not talking about a better mousetrap you're talking about a completely different thing it, it it's completely different than what was is known to the world so that's a that's been a tricky conversation but very tricky for us as well very <laughs> tricky <laughs> it is for everybody it is it was for sid it took sydney banks 10 months to get one other person to hear what he was saying According to him, he says there it was there was it was ten months before another living soul heard what he was talking about. That's I mean, and I know he was talking about it every day. And this is Sidney Banks, you know, like he, he wasn't like a a uh, Keith Blevins. It wasn't like a Keith Plevins or a Harry Drabinsky or, yeah. or you know, a Nikki or a Joe or, I mean, the guy was unbelievable. And he experienced unbelievable change, unbelievable change, unbelievable, Mir miraculous change and still 10 months. So it's been a, a slow growing, um, but because of that rigor, because of that certainty, because of that, um, this is just a funny way to say it, but um, 
there's a little a little story I heard once that about about something different. Uh, a, 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 a native. This is a native kind of a Native American story, but you could you could you could say to anyone, they. Uh, this little boy comes to his grandfather and says, uh, the grandfather had said that, he, the little boy says, well, what holds up the world, grandfather? And, uh, and, and the grandfather says, well, the world's on the back of a turtle. And so the little boy goes, wow, it's fantastic. So he goes away and he thinks about it. He thinks, well, what holds up the turtle? So he comes back and he says, well, what what holds up the turtle? And, and uh, the grandfather says, "Oh, it's another turtle." It and he says, "Well, what holds up that turtle?" He says, "Son, grandson, it's just turtles all the way down." Well, that is a it 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 it. Uh, it, it it's such a novel way of thinking that it it was it was it was so different and that's what Sidney Banks found and he found it through thought he found that novelty that rigor that uh, I, I call it a paradigm uh, you can call it you can call it whatever you want but the principles are the are a new foundation for mental life and um, and behavior, and for and for human beings, and the answer to all suffering. Yeah, not not to the pain, but the suffering. You know, the suffering is it's horrific, really. You know, the suffering of of human beings and we all know we, we've all suffered ourselves and we all know and you can look around and you you talk to anybody you you know that there you, you find you find that suffering but that's the elimination of that uh rumination obsession worry doubt fear jealousy envy hate all those negativities that infect the world are all mental the lack of mental rigor that this uh, that's one way you could say it a lack of and and sydney bank said once um uh on a recording that i have he said uh someone asked him well have you ever have you ever uh he, well he well I'll, I'll just say it simply he said I wouldn't even consider trying to figure it out um, because that would get me right back into the mess again. And that I think that typifies some sort of rigor that he had that he, he, he wouldn't, he knew if he crossed that line. I, when I teach people, I, I talk about this line, this red line between the principles and non-principles just as a way to help them grapple with the, the rigor there's there's a new a certain a new logic about the nature of mental life and human behavior that we've we've never had we've never had principles of of human behavior And, and, and mental life. And now we know there's three principles. And uh, that, uh, and Sid says, uh, it, he gave me a book that I haven't, it's first, I've never written a book, um, but he gave me a book filled with his writings uh, to, to publish, and I haven't published it yet. But he says, in there, in there, he says, "I found, uh, I found those principles. The moment of, of enlightenment, the moment I, I found, I found them there, right there, right then and there. 
I found the three principles. And so I, I think it behooves all of us to, just to study it and uh, listen to it and see what more there is for us. And, and I know that's the purpose of this group is just to explore those principles and profit from the, uh, the truth of, 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 the, of, of their nature. Because anyone, as he says in, in, in my book, he says, or he says, this is your book, Keith. But he's got a, he, it's, it, he's on every page. But um, he says, uh, anyone who, who, who finds any one of these three principles um, must um, land in a state of love and true understanding. And if you learn to use any one of these principles properly, that's how he puts it, you, you must land, you must create a state of love and true understanding. And that's just phenomenal. It's amazing. And when you vary from it, then you don't use the principles properly. And I and, and I've done that, and I've done it many, many, you know, millions of times since I met Sid. But it's, and, and and I'm sure all of you have too. You know, when you're talking, Keith, um, two things came to my mind. The first is when you talked about Salt Spring and the impact that we had. To me, this is the image of this group. This mm -hmm. is Salt Spring. This is just another emanation of Salt Spring. Exactly. Five, five other people who, are, who were extremely troubled or suffering, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, from mental health, whatever's, and uh, rose above all of that like a phoenix. And we're, 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 and we're, we're, we're right with you. We're not, uh, we've suffered too, Harry and I. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's not just five, it's. No, 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 it's seven. That. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh, no, 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 that, that's the beauty of it. I mean, that's why I love it. It, it shatters my belief system of what people like, because you get beyond the label, you can see the essence of the wisdom. And then you get to taste the wisdom that each of these beautiful people have. And they have really taught me a lot. And, uh, and to watch their growth has also been really, uh, uh, I use the word a lot of fun you know, a lot of fun uh, type of thing. The other, the other thing that, that I, I, I picked up, Keith, when, like, Sid's rigor, if this is correct, but I'm hoping I have it correct, he never compromised um, truth or the, the, S, the purity of the principles for uh, getting more people or getting more money or, or, uh, 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 if he didn't feel the person was coming from the right place, he still was teaching, and he never he never discerned from whether the person was powerful or unpowerful. He just helped. If he, if that's what the feeling presented, he he would he would be uh, doing that. And uh, you know, there's lots of stories where Sid would walk past a person homeless, and he. He, the, this is a chip story, but he would he would go in with chip and they'd buy an extra hamburger, whatever it was, the combo thing, and bring it to the guy in the street. And then they would sit down and talk to the guy. And uh, there was there was a lot of a lot of that type of feeling. And the other thing I, I Salt Spring was not so much about dropping thought. It was more about uh, there's a spiritual reality, that's where he started. And then he took us into the spiritual reality, which we totally didn't understand. And we would often 
personally be listening and going, I'd be thinking about something and I go, here's this enlightened man talking pure truth. And I'm thinking about this and that. And there was the dropping of the thought type of thing. Right. But it was more like a soaring type of feeling. He was stinking with enlightenment and he was, he was uh, absolute. But there was never a compromise in terms of, the, of whether he could get more famous or more this or more. That. He was always pure to it. And he, he also obviously was listening to the spirit because when you guys came, you're, you know, Roger, and as you mentioned, George and yourself, he shifted immediately to where that he, he trusted that that feeling and moved in that direction. And of course, that was a monumental change in what was happening in, 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 in uh, changed everything. And he had to change his demeanor and his, you know, his, he became a, a corporation and all this type of stuff, but he never compromised like money versus sharing of, of the truth type of thing. And, uh, is that does that fit into the rigor definition? Well, sure, absolutely, absolutely, and we marvel at that now, like that hamburger story, for example. Or, but 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 uh, by the way, one of the I think I so this is my unpublished book, and he says right at the Oh, this is not going to have it in here. But he says, it, it, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, but I, I shouldn't. I should just tell you if I could quote it. But he, said, he says, throughout the ages, um, there have been the enlightened ones. And the enlightened ones always had a, he tells, he tells this to me, he tells it in a paragraph. I'm going to put it in the first page of my book because he he says the enlightened ones and, and the enlightened ones always had a, a profound message to give to this world and um uh but they were often um, misunderstood because people intellectualized it and uh so but that's the rigor, like 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 that story about the hamburger. Let's just say, well, that, that that's a story of Jesus Christ. That's a story of Buddha. That's a story of other enlightened beings, um, Abraham, whatever. Uh, the, the, they were not from there, uh, and not that I'm one of those people and, or Harry either, but uh, that they saw no difference, like Sid saw no difference between the homeless person and the corporate executive, or, or Christ uh, saw no difference between the, the prostitutes and the, and the uh, rabbis, etc. The rabbis and the Pharisees and all, all that, all, the, all those, we marvel at those. And we, 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 and we think, well, that's really, isn't that great of them? They were so uh, for the people, but but in the in their world we can only imagine. But in, in their world, the, of course there was no there was no difference. There is no difference, and uh, it, that's that rigor. That's that uh, not not going according to like you're saying uh, harry not 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 according to money it's nothing to do with money nothing to do with power or it was to do with the uh, they were going on another um song <laughs> you know and uh i don't know however you say it but that that's a rigor and that's a rigor that i see uh that we can all abide by as best we can. And we will become more 
you know, it, it will help. It, it has already helped us. It's helped all of all of you, and me too, and and Harry too. So so don't ever think there's any difference. It, it's a it's a spiritual truth, and and there is no. There are no, um, no, there's, there really isn't any other, there's, there aren't any judgments. Like, like it, it Sid explains it in my book, he says um, about, he says, anyone teaching uh, better modes of thinking, for example, he says, they, they don't have a clue what they're talking about with, with regard to the principles, because the, the the principle of thought or the principle of consciousness or the principle of mind they're not um, divi divisible they're not in layers or um, they, they 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 don't conf this is how I would say it they don't conform to um, good bad right wrong high low they're not, consciousness is not about high-low. Uh, thought is not about good, bad, or positive, negative. It, it's, di it's a different logic. And, uh, and, and that logic has no, um, no separation. So it, it's inseparable from, from intellectual corruption. And um, that's rigor. It's something that's a principle is incorruptible. It can't be, man's mind can't mess with it, you might say. Like it has a certain uh, uh, it's a spiritual truth that isn't uh, relegated to well, what I think and what you think and it's not it's not about that that it's not about that and and and, and he just kept saying it and kept saying it and kept saying it for as long as he lived and uh and so i so so to me that definitiveness is um is is a is a uh, built-in part of what uh, he brought and and uh, and has made it be teachable or better teachable uh, because you can't you can't mix it like he he would say don't don't mix it with with common psychology or don't don't mix it and and uh, and I, I I just I just really really appreciate that. I, one of the stories that I tell, uh, you know, and this will be easy, easy to see. Uh, there, there was a time not that long ago, maybe in the 1850s, there, there were no germs on the planet. Well, of course, there were germs everywhere. But human beings had never seen it. No one had ever had the microscope to see a germ. They didn't even know that germs existed. So they, So surgeons did surgery without washing their hands. And, of course, they killed people right and left. But... They introduced infection. Even in 1900, there was a president of the United States who was wounded by an, an assassin. And his um, wound, the doctors were right around him, and you know, the Secret Service and all that, and, they, and uh, there was a bullet, and, and they, and this is in 1900, this is like 120 years ago. You would think the best medical practices would, you know, would have known better, but they, they fiddled around with his wound with, with dirty hands, and they got the bullet out. But in a week, the president was dead. <laughs> Why did he die of? He did not die of the bullet wound. He died of the infection that the dirty hands of the doctors that were trying to help him, introduced to him. They poisoned his blood 
with bacteria and it killed them. So um, with, when this discovery, which had been made in 1858, this, so this is 1900, still even the president's own physicians didn't really get it, that you, you could kill people with dirty hands introduced to a wound. Uh, but that guy in 1850 uh, realized the logic, there's a logic to germs. And he saw the logic of it. And he, um, there's a little story about that, but I can, I don't have to tell it, but, uh, but, but he, so he, he was a head of a surgical unit and he, and he tacked up on the door because what was happening was the doctors were, were doing autopsies and getting their hands in, in germs and then wiping them off on their aprons and going right down to the end of the hall and delivering babies and cutting on mothers and, and killing mothers. But undiseased mothers would die then in the weeks ahead by infections and they called it child bed fever. And this guy, this guy saw, saw what the little story is he, uh, one of his fellow surgeons who was doing autopsies with him uh, told him to go, you got to take a vacation because he was just perplexed about this because those women, women were not dying in the midwifery unit next door. His incidence of death was 10%. In the midwifery unit, right across the wa wall, the incidence was 1%. Now, why was there a difference? So that he was perplexed by that. The, diff the, the reason was in the midwifery unit, they weren't doing autopsies. In his unit, the medical unit, they did, all, they did autopsies all the time. So his fellow surgeon says, you've got to take a break. You're, you're driving yourself crazy with this what's killing these uh, the women on our side of the wall here. So he goes to Vienna. He's an Aust a little Austri Austrian doctor. And he comes back and he goes right back into doing autopsies and, and, and Kolechka was his friend's name. And he said, where's Kolechka? I need him to help me with this next autopsy. And the attendant says, you haven't heard? And he said, heard what? He said, Kolechka's dead. And he said, oh my God, what, what happened? He said, we don't know. He developed a, a, a high fever and uh, he was dead in a week. So uh, Silmawise, which is his name, he goes to up to the autopsy, to the medical records, and he reads his his friend's autopsy, the fellow surgeon. And he reads that uh, there's a little note there that says that Kolechka got nicked in the hand during an autopsy by a clumsy medical student. And right away, Semmelweis thought there must have been that, because his he, when he read the conditions that his fellow surgeon died of, they were exactly like all the mothers. So Simmelweis thought, my friend died of child of childbed fever, and he's a male. That's not possible. There must have been something else that's going on here. And he thought there must have been some material on that scalpel that nicked my friend in the hand. And that was the beginning of germ theory that he made that connection. So he uh, ruled that physicians had to wash their hands and wash their instruments and change aprons. That was the three requirements 
if they're coming from the autopsy lab and going to do surgery, they have to get a new, a new coat. They have to delegate to the nurses to wash the instruments and they have to wash their hands. Well, the doctors said, okay, 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 okay. We'll get the maids to give us a clean apron and we'll tell the nurses to wash the instruments, but we're not washing our hands. That is ridiculous. I didn't learn anything about this obligation in medical school and we're not doing it. Well, they didn't get the rigor, right? You see what I mean? They didn't get that their hands were just as lethal as the instruments, which is just as lethal as the, the aprons. It was all lethal because it all had germs on it. And Sidney Banks was one of those people he was one of those people that said, oh, you go uh, in the common way that we think about what causes human behavior, we, we call it the past, the personality, the problems, the, we don't, and the truth is we, we had no, I had no clue and, and, and no, None of my fellow professionals did. When I met him, I saw that he was like Semmelweis. And he was, Semmelweis was a very fiery person. He, uh, th there would be a medical meeting and Semmelweis, he's a fiery little Hungarian guy, but Scott, but Sid was a, he was a fiery little Scottish guy. I mean, in one way, you know, he was like, he wouldn't mess around with you. Like he'd say, and Semmelweis was of the same thinking. He would stand up in the medical um, meetings and point fingers at his fellow physicians and say, you, sir, are a murderer. Well, that didn't go over very well with his <laughs> I bet. You know? <laughs> I, just... I mean, that, that was like... He was controversial, but Sid was of, of the same, his rigor, it wasn't that he was controversial for controversial sake. He was trying to save lives. You know, Sid, Sid was trying to save lives. So he was, he had that way about him and it, it, it was shocking to me. And he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding around. Harry knows this too. Anyone who spent any time with the guy knew. I mean, he was wonderful, but he was also he had a rigor. He wasn't he wasn't kidding, you know. He he knew what he knew, and he wasn't about to say, "Well, well, now, yeah, never mind. Um, you can you can do surgery with dirty hands." He would he would never do that. He he, he couldn't do it. That's rigor. That's certainty. That's something that he knew, and he knew he knew, and he wasn't about to say, "Oh yeah, I'll never mind." You know? How could he? You you wouldn't either. You can't, you can't say it doesn't. It, you know the negativities don't don't matter yeah they do they that's do matter. right they do matter they do matter yeah bullshit is still bullshit <laughs> yeah and the world really needs uh to know that we all need to know it we all need to know it you know with more certainty and that's what we're we're growing in that certain certainty and um, and uh, God bless God bless you guys and God bless all of us to for what we found and what and, and, and for sharing it with you know in 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 the ways that we can find to share it and we meet in these little enclaves like this this is like a little enclave. 
like a little group of pro prototypical experimental people that said, man, there's something to this stuff. What the heck is it? You know, like, hey, let's talk about it. You know, so, uh, but these, these little groups are meeting, you know, all over the world now, but it's still little, you know, little, it, this little small groups. I, I always think, why aren't there hundreds of, why aren't there hundreds of people on this uh, uh, conference? You know, but there are hundreds of conferences, but they're just, they're still uh, little outposts of, of truth sharing the same thing. And, and, and then and at some point we get them together and we have what, what you call a convention, but still, it, it's not uh, it's not a worldwide knowledge. We're a long, long way from that, but it's rigor. That's one way that that's just a word to describe the certainty that Semmelweis had, that Sydney Banks had, that Jesus Christ had. They they knew. They knew something that was was really really important, and they weren't about to say uh, it wasn't important. Well, I've talked enough, probably. But any thoughts or questions or comments or? Yeah, I. I... I definitely have I'm, I, just kind of things that I, I wanted to share that just came to mind as you were talking. Um, I guess kind of two things really. Um, I, I work in mental health um, and the reason that I um, trained to be a psychotherapist was because I was searching for the fix for myself because I was so broken, you know, well, that's how I saw myself. And, um, <clears throat> and now I'm, um, and so I've done kind of all sorts of work and latterly it was kind of three principles coaching that I was doing, but it, you know, it just, anyway, I, I, I'm now working for the Department for Work and Pensions as a health and wellbeing coach. And um, I'm working with participants who have been out of work for 12 months or longer and have been on um, benefits. And the idea is to try to, where mental health is a barrier to them working, to try to overcome that in order to get them back to work. Mm. The thing that constantly amazes me, you know, so I'm surrounded by people in the, you know, um, I work in a team of nurses and doctors and psychologists, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, and it doesn't matter who I talk to, you know, when I go, you know, have you heard of the three principles? Have you heard? No one. I've never, ever met anybody that's gone, oh, yeah, never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it just highlights to me um, how much work there is to do. Yeah, you know, like you, like you were saying. Yeah. And, but what I kind of love about what I'm doing is like I've got complete autonomy, in the sense that there's nobody watching me when I meet these people. So like I met someone today, and they, you know, they've been re really suffering with anxiety and depression and OCD and all these different labels that GPs and psychos, you know, have given them. And I was able to go you know, once they kind of offloaded anything, you know, I really like to have a conversation with you about something. And they're kind of like, okay. And I said, and, and I'm going to tell you that it's been really helpful to me because I've been where you were. Maybe it'll help and maybe it won't, but I, you know, and, um, you just, you don't know, you never know what impact you have on people. But um, 
just being able to have those conversations. And I, I, I don't really have to go, we're going to have a conversation about the three principles. Like, you know, I'm just going to have a conversation about something that, a truth that I've seen that I really want to share with you. Because when you know this truth, like it, it has the potential to change everything. Mm. And then when you were talking, the other thing that I wanted to say was when you were talking with, you were talking about the doctors, you know, so this, this, this doctor, you know, that, that discovered germ theory, mm-hmm. and all the doctors that, that wanted to carry on doing it as they'd always, as they'd been taught in med school, but actually what they were doing was killing people. You know, it kind of like, that felt to me, obviously, you know, to a lesser degree, but it feels like it's, that's psychology. That's, that's, you know, that's psychology in, in the, in the psychology field, like this is, you know, we're all kind of stuck on the DSM five and all, you know, the, the labels and um, no one, no one is, seems open to, to the fact that actually what we're doing isn't helping. Mm. You know, what those doctors were doing, I wasn't helping these people, these people were dying. But, but they weren't open to the possibility that maybe there was, maybe, maybe there was something else here. Maybe there was something else to see. It was kind of like, no, this is how we do it. This is, this is it. Mm. You know, that that opening up um yeah I don't know if any of that kind of makes sense but that's just what was on the top of my yeah head. well I uh, uh I don't know if anyone else I mean I I, I can comment like a, uh yeah uh It, 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 it's interesting, uh, like I have a lot of, I, I work with a lot of people, fellow professional people like yourself. Um, and uh, one of the things that, that they routinely say was that the, cl- the clients, the patients, the folks that are, that they're there to care for, they, feel a great affinity for them and they just and 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 they they, but they have those chances like you you have your autonomy and these folks come in and they and they download it and they say this or that and then you say yeah me too i I hear you but but to something else uh, could i could i share something with you and yet right on you know the fellow, there are other fellows that are running the clinics and the, the, they're not, they, they don't get a chance to have those conversations with them because they're all, they got the, they already know what the answer is. The patients, they don't. They're like, you got something? What do you got? You know, tell me. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. I have to go. I don't want to be rude and just um, um, delete ahead. that. Yeah, I have to go. And the, the one thing I will say is that um, when we're in our personal mind, we still believe the world is flat. <laughs> yeah. As simple as that. Yeah, yeah. And when we're in a universal mind, the world is round. Yeah, I have to go. Thank you so much, Keith. Oh, you're so welcome, John. Okay, bless you. Bless you all. Okay, John. And uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, Yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because what you two are, and with John, what he said, it, it has created a, a surprising amount of, of 
uh, frustration for me to go out to all these podcasts and watch the, there's been an openness to what we're, we're talking about, but not a reception. Yeah. And that uh, in addiction, Keith, there is not an openness. There is AA and then a little bit deeper trauma causes, but nothing it, yeah. it's very set in their minds. But in mental health, there has been a, a surprisingly large openness to listening to something, but not a reception. It hasn't landed. It, yeah. And that has caused well, me, me to, to feel... Uh, I'm actually quite frustrated by it because I'm in, you know, if they're listening, why don't they get it type, yeah. of, type of thing. But what you're talking about, what John added has helped bring a little bit of peace for me. So I wonder, yeah. Nikki, the, and you, it's helped me because I have, I have, uh, I like to be light and airy and optimistic and have fun. And, uh, but I like them to have fun. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think about Sid like, like in one, in, just in one little brief instance. But there was some seminar. He he was he was talking to a group of people, and this woman raised up her hand and said, "Well, I, I'm a teacher uh, in a in a public school, and I." Uh, but I, I just can't get the administrators to listen to me like they're, uh, and she goes on and on and on about what, how difficult it is to talk to these people. And, and then Sid says, so he's on the podium over here and he says, yeah, well, what about me? Like, like you, you think it's hard for you. Uh, he says, you, you, you can't believe what it, the, conversations I've had I mean he's really you know he had a really it, it wasn't all pieces and it wasn't all sweetness and light for him either like he, he had the likes of me to deal with or Harry or or whoever uh you know doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs all came to him and said I don't think so and and and, and he says in my book watching them walk away it broke his heart like you're so close. You're so close. Yet your own beliefs prevent you from really sticking with this and hearing what I'm saying, you know. But there were a few that, for whatever reason, stuck. But uh, but he had, uh, you know, he so 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 you know, Harry, Nikki, uh, all of us. I mean. But that's a way it, I mean, that throughout history, it's always been that way. You know, you know, it, 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 if you didn't have something uh, new, you know, uh, if there wasn't, if there wasn't a movement, here's how one way I think about it, if there wasn't a change in the status quo, there would, there wouldn't be anything new. There has the status quo has to change and and um that's a that dynamic is uh it's uh it's just the way it works like you you know like you you're confronting it nikki you know but welcome to the welcome to the way you know things are that like like Semmelweis he knew he saw the logic of germs he didn't know he didn't know what that material was and it was 30 years before they had the optics to see a germ but he knew he knew right there bang that's killing mothers in my hospital and I'm not going to stand still for it you know and he happened to be the boss of the uh, of the obstetrics unit he wasn't the boss of the hospital. But it just, you know, uh, uh, a truth has to interrupt the status quo because the status quo has all this disease in it, all this 
dementia, all this alcoholism, all this drug addiction, all this pain and suffering. And, and it is like uh, talking round earth to flat earthers, you know, but, but what are you going to do? 